All right, hello everybody, welcome back. Here's another build series I'm gonna do uh, based upon a train wreck, Liverpool. Uh, Ken Fisher was an amp guru. He passed, I think it was in the late 90s, but he built quite a few train wrecks that were quite popular uh, amongst the kind of <laughs> rock elite. They're not easy to buy nowadays, quite expensive, but I'm just gonna do a clone of the Liverpool. Uh, part of the reason I decided to do this is I will quickly go back and show you the original amp I ever built was a Hoffman AC30. Now if you remember I also showed a short video of me going back and redoing some of the wiring and fixing some things that I had done not so well. But I also recently built an AC30-4 and this ends up making it kind of pointless for me to have two AC30s that are a little different and I really preferred the AC30-4 anyway. So the bigger, more important part here is if I look at the schematic down here, it's got four AC or EL84 output tubes and it uses a total of three preamp tubes and a 5AR4 rectifier, uh, as well as a, you know, the, a very, very similar topology in general. Uh, and so I was gonna reuse the Hoffman layout style, but tweak it and remove some of those things that I don't need, change things and add things that I did. But effectively, I, I had hoped uh, to be able to take this uh, and build it into the train wreck. So we'll go back to the train wreck and talk about the circuit really briefly. A couple of important changes about this. So this, uh, this amp was designed to be almost on the edge of oscillation and bad distortion and feedback because Ken Fisher knew how to tweak it and dial it in. Uh, some interesting things are, for example, there's no screen resistor here. Uh, so uh, that's a fairly common thing most amps have is uh, 33 or 68 or even 100k and this has none. Uh, then we have the tone stack right after the first preamp tube going into the volume and then a, a bright switch which then goes into the next preamp stage and interestingly enough initially he would admit having any resistor here and it depended on the amp some of them would need anywhere between 820 ohms up to 2.2k ohms to kind of tame a little bit of what was coming into that next stage. Uh, and then it goes in through and into the phase inverter. Uh, it has a presence control down here as well that comes off of the bias or the negative feedback, which, you know, as you see, the negative feedback comes to that right side off the speaker all the way through this 100K resistor right here and then down into the presence control down here. Uh, but it has a fairly common uh, type phase inverter with one interesting exception is this capacitor here is a 100 picofarad. That is a, it seems to me anyway, to be like a coupling capacitor that actually creates a little bit of negative feedback from either side towards each other uh, to maybe kind of tame the circuit a little bit as well. I think I've seen this in some Marshalls. I'm not sure if anybody wants to comment about that. I would definitely love to learn more about it. But uh, other than that, it's a, uh, it has its own uh, set of power tubes going through, interestingly here, two separate sets of resistors. So they each have their own a bias resistor and bias capacitor um, and if you look that comes off of the um, like the outer I think it was the outer two if I remember right let's look yeah the outer two tied to this group and then the inner two were the ones that tied into the second one and I think somebody had told me that so that it was easier to just pull two uh, two of the tubes out if you wanted to go a little bit lower output but um, we'll build it the way it's got this designed here as best I can to be a perfect clone and then if I need to tweak some of these values there's also a few notes here some of the guys from the uh, amp garage have done a lot of work on these they've set put up a little a few notes about some of these resistors and capacitors need to be tweaked occasionally uh, and so uh, we'll, we'll see how that comes out as well so I also have a short video to show you of the old amp before I tear it apart and then the rest of the series will just be on me rebuilding things so I hope you guys enjoy the build thanks okay everybody welcome back today uh, this is my original box AC 30 build that I did with Doug's layout a long time ago and uh, since I just recently built that AC30-4, I am wanting to repurpose this board to build myself a train wreck Liverpool. So, first of all, I apologize if I've got a little bit of a cold or something, so my voice is kind of rough. But um, So I'll basically <coughs> go over quickly what all of that's going to entail. Um, I'll be going through this layout and modifying it slightly. There's a few parts of it that won't be needed, other parts that can be reused. Other parts will have to be replaced. Uh, some parts will just be pulled out. I can save them for later. All the filtering caps are basically wrong in the train wreck. They have a lot more um, filtering going on. But uh, So I'll be basically disassembling this guy and getting it ready for use with the train wreck. So we'll bring you back after I pulled everything out and we'll take a look. You'll be able to see the, the basics of the, what's left behind. So we'll catch that after the cut. All right, so if you look, you'll see we've got a lot of various parts, a bunch of wires laying around there in the back. But the most important part would be right here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Let's 
Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through one of the things I hadn't noticed is if you look at this power resistor, it was roasty. But I'm going to be basically pulling all three of these power resistors. I have to pull a jumper off the bottom, but I also want to at this. I want to kind of clean up a lot of these solder joints were just really badly done by me, as this is my first turret board. So I used some kind of braided wire for my grounding bus that wasn't very good for it. So I'm going to remove it all and reground it and re well, I mean, all not just grounding, but all of the jumpers. I'll just kind of do them one at a time and remember where things go and look at the um, the new thing that I have. But um, I will pause here for a second. Actually, I wanted to show you. I've taken the time to go through it and kind of figure out what's going to have to remove, be removed, what's going to change, etc. So I'll be right back. Okay, hopefully you can see this. But effectively, for example, I've gone through and noted these all need to be removed and replaced with one 1K 5 watts. This choke is removed and put in with a 1K 25 watt. I've crossed out all of these are 9K. This one's actually going to be 9K times 2. So what I might do is, since this is all grounded, is I might connect it about here bring it up and then I will shrink wrap between the two or heat shrink between the two so that there's no potential wire touching and then bring it back in over here. And then the other thing is I have to remove this bottom jumper wire because this is correct but I need a jumper between this line and then this line so I'll probably also just move that guy to here because there's a, there was a slight difference in how much the AC30 needed to drop but in this case it's all just 9.1k resistors in all these positions and each of the B plus rails are changed. I have to change a lot of the potentiometers and wiring uh, and I also, I'm going to be removing the 33K resistors. Um, this this half of the is the input, and then these two are going to be shared, and this one's not used. I mean, I'm in, in, in the center, but you can see I've taken the time to go through and mark what needs to be removed and changed based upon the old Hoffman layout and the new train wreck layout. So uh, if you've watched the intro video, that does cover what this is all about and how it's going, but I just wanted to show the pages about that really quickly. So there you have it. All right, everybody, so as you can see, I've stripped it down to a pretty bare board. I'm going to have to do a lot of cleanup. I've got a lot of flux and splatter from getting it off, but I did rerun all of my grounding wires a little bit neater instead of with the crummy stuff I'd had before. Um, I'm going to be rerunning some different resistors and capacitors for a lot of this stuff, but it's still in the same locations, roughly. As you can see from here, again, I've got some notes here. I'll go through those and I'm going to go replace most of this stuff. There's going to be a few areas that will be bare that won't have much. Here are going to be all of the same high 3 watt resistors but they're 1K instead of 100 ohm. Uh, I'll have to put a separate board on the side because I have to have a large 130 ohm, uh, I, think, I think it's 130 ohm, 10 or 15 watt and then we have to have another one of these capacitors because in, in the train wreck instead of having a single cathode capacitor and, and resistor, they have dual to kind of ha do each half. Um, the good thing is, is on my, already on my sockets, I've got the 1.5K resistor, so those will be reused. Um, I had to pull out these capacitors here because they were point, they were point uh, 0.1 and I need to be 0 0.022, that kind of stuff. So a lot of the lineup of this stuff is the same, it's just different values. So this is the tone stack, it is already the same. I'm gonna have to just jumper pretty much from the output down here all the way over to here. So I'm still debating if I'll do an actual physical jumper wire or if I will take the 100K resistor from here and then just cover its lead with some shrink wrap and then bring it down to here or something. But one of those two things, we'll get it, we'll get it there. But you'll have another update here shortly after I've cleaned the rest of that up, get them all my components in and start putting it together. So.